All right, hello everyone. Hello. Hope everyone had a good Christmas. Um, I'm Jason, this is my wife Amy. We're here to uh, give a little lesson uh, and to learn more about God's Word today. Um, so, first I'm going to start off with the verse of the day, which is Psalm 102, and it is, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. All right. So today we're going to talk about someone who built a very large thing. And I was just wondering, has anyone here ever built something? Any of your kids ever built anything? I don't know about you guys, but we have some Legos in our house. And we've got some builders who like to build things. So today we're going to hear about what King Solomon built to show God and how much, or and how much he loved him. So... I'm going to let Miss Amy do most of the reading here. So if you guys have a pen at home or paper, um, markers, you're welcome to draw some pictures along as I read. Um, sometimes when we're, we're in session here, we even use Play-Doh. So if you have clay or Play-Doh, you can do that as well. When Solomon became king of Israel, he asked God for wisdom so that he could rule the people well. God was very pleased with Solomon's request. He gave Solomon not only wisdom, but also wealth. That meant Solomon was a very rich man. As the king, he could do anything he wanted with all his money, food, gold, and silver. Solomon loved God very much, and he was grateful for all the gifts God had given him. Solomon wanted to give a gift to God. His gift was to lead the people in constructing a beautiful building where they would worship God. This building was called the temple. So if you want to start drawing a picture of a temple or making some pillars for a temple, temples usually are really grand buildings that that have some fancy pieces to it. It took, this temple in the Bible, took seven years to finish. It took a long time to build because it was so beautiful. The temple was built on a hill so everyone could see it. There were two tall bronze pillars in front of it. The white stones of its walls sparkled in the sunlight. Much of the inside was covered with gold. Must have been kind of hard to look at with all that shininess. King Solomon led a joyful parade to bring the Ark of the Covenant to its permanent home in the temple. The Ark was, was the box where God had told Moses to place the stone tablets of the law. So the Ten Commandments, that was what was written on that. So the Ark was a fancy box that held those stone tablets. The ark was special to the Israelites because it reminded them that God was always with them. As the parade traveled the streets of Jerusalem, people came out to join in the celebration. Everyone wanted to see the beautiful new temple. The ark of the, the, ark of the covenant was put in a special room called the Most Holy Place. Great statues of angels with gold wings that reminded people of God's power stood guard on either side of the Ark of the Covenant. Now we get to some more shiny things. If you want to, you can draw a picture of a trumpet or you know, something else that makes a lot of noise. The priests gathered together to begin the first worship service in the new temple. The celebration began with the priest playing cymbals and harps and lyres, I'm not even sure how to say that, <laughs> Bible time instruments that were like small harps. Jason, Mr. Jason has a fancy <laughs> shiny thing right here. What I wanted this, to bring Mr. something Jason? to help the story, but uh, I don't have a trumpet, but I do have a brass instrument, which has a bell like a trumpet, and I just thought I'd bring it to, to show you. Um, I haven't played it in many years, but the way you play it, just a little side note, is you buzz your lips 
like that, and when you do that, the vibrations come through and they come out the bell in a louder noise. So, <laughs> I can't really remember any songs right now, but I just wanted to share that. Oh. And he has played it. Sometimes he plays it at home. So. All right. Thank you, Mr. Jason. Mm -hmm. There were also 120 priests playing trumpets, so things similar to what Mr. Jason just showed us. All the musicians and singers joined together to give praise and thanks to God. They sang, He is good, His love endures forever. The God, the, or the people were very happy to have such a beautiful place to worship God. As the priests were singing, an amazing thing happened. The whole temple was filled with a beautiful cloud. By this cloud, God showed that he was very pleased with this temple that Solomon had built. Now God's people could come together and worship him in a special place. Solomon stood in front of the temple. He spoke to the people who came to worship God. He praised God and told people the story about how the temple had been built. He reminded the people the ways God used his power to protect them over the years, rescuing them from Egypt, keeping his promises, and forgiving their sins. Then Solomon prayed. Solomon asked God to take care of his people forever and help people everywhere come to know him. The people listening to Solomon had come from all over the kingdom. Some were from very far away. They were so full of joy to be able to worship God in the beautiful temple that when this week of celebration had ended, they all stayed another week. The temple stood for many, many years. The people of Israel were filled with joy because they had a temple in which they could worship God for all the great things he has done. And you know, I was thinking as I read this, this is, a, this is a different time where we can't come together as a group of people to buildings to worship God like this one. But you can worship God at home and, and with your, your loved ones there. So even though we talk about a temple and we can, you know, in, in, in different times we're able to come together, you can always worship God at home. So we wish you were here, but we're thankful to be with you today and we hope that you are doing well and we'll see you again. All right. Bye.